um, Rolly Romero was supposed to face Alberto Apoyo for, uh, what is that, the WBA? Um, I'm not sure. Maybe one of them. I think he was fighting at 140. Yeah, I'm not fighting sure at 140. Rolly moves up. Alberto Apoyo tested uh, positive for banned substance. What's your thought on that whole situation? It seemed like it's a lot more guys starting to test positive. Um, no, I don't know. Uh, he's uh, he's in the same camp as the guy we going against. Uh, oh shit, he is. A dominant, so. Who knows, man? You know, until all of the facts come out, you know, you just gotta just, you know, just hopefully Vada just catches whoever's doing what. You know what I mean? Uh, I'll probably, I've been really outspoken on testing and boxing, but it's one of those things. I'm not gonna say it's a lost cause, but you know, it's just. Nobody really cares, you know, not, nothing really gets done, you know, so I don't know. I don't want to condemn the kid because I don't have anything to do with Raleigh, you know what I mean? It's not That's not my fighter, so I don't really have anything to say about it. Just, I mean, you test positive, let's see what the punishment is, let's see what his excuse is, whatever. It seems like it's, um, every time somebody tests positive, though, everybody has the same excuse. You know, it was a mistake, they didn't know. So it's, I think it's up to the commissions and the sanctioning bodies or whatever to just inflict harsher punishments, you know, um, and then maybe that'll discourage some people. But I don't know the young man's specific details of what happened with him, so I really don't want to speak on it. Overall in boxing, I think that they got to start suspending these guys. They got to start. Fighters aren't educated. They aren't scientists. I'm not, let me take that back. I'm not going to say they're not educated. A fighters is not walking around knowing how to microdose themselves into these things. Somebody's doing it for them. So I think that, you know, that they got to get, find out what's going on and find out why these guys are um, testing positive like this. Find out who's behind it. And, um, you know, hopefully they got to start handing out harsher suspensions. You could kill a guy in a boxing room. And, um, the excuse that I don't know what I was taking, we can't keep buying that. You know what I mean? Because if that's the case, everybody's going to have the same excuse. You know what I mean? It's a dangerous sport, but hopefully they work it out. Maybe it was a mistake, maybe it was, I don't know. But um, uh, hopefully Vada does their job and, you know, keep catching guys. That's all I can say. I'm going to go a little less uh, PR. How, how long is boxing going to get away with the, my dog ate my homework? Yeah, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> Some of these, the thing is, like, right, um, like, there's this thing called plausible deniability, mm. and every time somebody tests positive, they got an excuse waiting right in the chamber. Well, I ate that food, and that food contains this, right? So I feel like that the person who's giving them this stuff, they're saying to them, if you get caught, say that you ate eggs or meat. Wild boar, or whatever the excuses have been over the last couple of years. Like, I feel like the like the excuses are ready. So I think that somebody's really, really smart that's handling all of this stuff. That's does that, that, that's, that's doping the fighters. I think that they're telling them, in case you get caught, have this excuse made already, so you could, so it can look like an innocent, innocent thing or accident. So I think that Vada and the sanctioning bodies, I think that they can't keep. This is just me personally. I think that they can't keep getting into whether they did it on purpose. I think that the bottom line is either you test it positive or you test it negative. All of the did you do it on purpose and all that kind of stuff, I think I don't think you can prove intent. You understand what I'm saying when it comes down to doping? If somebody says I ate eggs and you find out, or I ate meat and you find out that meat or eggs contain the same thing that the fighter had in his system, um, you can't really prove whether Nobody walks around with all of the receipts of their meals all the time. Mm -hmm. So you can't really prove whether somebody was doing it or not on purpose. But I don't think intent should be the main factor. I think that the bottom line is if you test positive, you test negative. Because when you fill out them forms, you are responsible for what you put in your body. You know what I mean? You, you're responsible for what your body has a website that tells you what you can take and what you can't take. So if you take something inadvertently, still got to pay, you know, the cost for that. So that's how I feel about it. But I, I really don't even like talking about it because it gets frustrating because the dog ate your home thing is just like, things got guys test positive. Don't nobody really fight a lot in this era anyway. So they get suspended, they come right back and get fights. There's really no punishment. 
you know what I mean? And, and, and if you get into the top level by cheating, even if you can't cheat when you get there, you already get into a million dollar payday. So nothing really deters you from cheating. You know what I mean? No team members get suspended. The fighters get suspended six months or a year. But if you fight once a year, that's no big deal to you. So it's just, it's just, it's crazy, man. You know what I mean? But I don't know. I, I didn't lost my breath trying to fight the good fight. So I, what I do now is just try to worry about the guys that I that I that I have in the fight that can afford the testing, that's making enough so they can test, and that's it. Because it's 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 almost like a lost cause. It's, it's happening so often. Thing you gotta say to yourself is, when the guy gets caught, is it the first time he did it or the first time he got caught? Usually, it's the first time you got caught. You know I mean? So, mm -hmm. I mean, who knows how long the guy's been doing this? Way. Now, Brad, you have a lot of prospects, though. Is that always in the back of your mind going into these club shows? No, I'm, honestly, it's not because you can't think like that. It's like, uh, I'm going to give you a good analogy. It's like you meet a girl, right? You're over a house late at night. You know, like herpes commercial, come on. <laughs> or that, or that stuff, the, whatever the commercial where they talk about the HIV medicine. If you think about that, you ain't going you know, you know, to be able to do what you came to do. You know what I mean? So... As a, with the prospects, you can't just think, oh my God, this guy might be juicing, that guy might be juicing, because it's going to be in their mind, and then the fighters, something get in their mind, and they don't be as confident, you know what I mean, take the confidence away, so I don't, I try not to, uh, to dwell on it, you know, and if I do think about it, I just don't talk to the fighter about it, mm -hmm. I'll just call, the, uh, you know, notify the proper people and tell them I want to. Get test, but I don't pick and choose testing. Any test that I was able to get testing for, any fight, I got it. Mm. Any fight. Like, I don't pick and choose and say, well, I'm not going to test this guy because he's not good. I don't do that. I'm like, I'm like, how much is he making? And if you're making over six figures, I'm like, well, get tested for the fight. Period. Like, mm. it's, I don't have no picks when it comes down to that. I feel like that when people cherry pick the testing and that shows, you know, um, that they might not be on the up and up. So every fight that one of my fighters has made over six figures, I have personally asked for testing. I've never had anybody ask me for testing first. I've always been the first person to ask for testing.